Hello everyone and welcome to your online Bible study for today, Wednesday the 2nd of March. Uh, yesterday, beginning of Lent, the first day of spring and uh, you can see the, the lovely day behind me here in Mountjoy and I hope you're able to get out and enjoy some of uh, the sunshine and the, the good weather that we're enjoying this week. A big change from last week when we had one storm after another. Today we're going to read from Matthew chapter 4, so if you get a Bible and have it open and we'll read God's word together. It's a passage that deals with the temptation of Jesus, Jesus 40 days in the wilderness and now we're uh, counting down to Easter, uh, the journey which we call Lent, dealing with the 40 days uh, ahead of us getting to Good Friday and Easter Sunday. But before we turn to God's word, uh, let's bow for a brief prayer. Father God, we do thank you for the lovely uh, sunshine, the, the lovely weather that we're enjoying currently uh, after all the storms. And Father, as we look out at nature, uh, there's a lesson there for us, that spring always follows winter, that the morning always follows the darkest night. And we're reminded that the joy and brightness and the light of Easter day follows the darkness of Good Friday. We thank you that we are Easter people, that Jesus defeated sin, defeated death, and that Jesus rose victoriously from the grave, and that in Jesus we have one who gives the victory. And so we praise you for Jesus. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you how he's filled with the Spirit, how he was filled with the Scriptures, how he was uh, lived his life in total obedience to you, faithful to you, and so, Father, we pray that we too would be like Jesus, filled with your Holy Spirit, filled with your scriptures and faithful to you, not giving in to Satan, but standing strong. So we pray you would help us. And now as we study your word, we do thank you for an open word. We thank you for the freedom to read your word. And we pray that whoever listens in tonight, that each one of us would be blessed and helped as we follow Jesus. Amen. So if you have a Bible, turn with me to Matthew chapter 4 and we read God's word together. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands, so that not, you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered, it is also written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All this I will give you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil left him and the angels came and attended him. Amen. We thank God for this reading from his word. I'm just going to draw out a few uh, key uh, passages or phrases in this passage and then we'll draw together with some words of application. First of all, we see that Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert. This is the third occasion that Matthew tells us about where the Spirit is actively involved in Jesus' life. Uh, first of all, we have the Spirit involved in his conception. And then secondly, just prior to this event, Jesus is baptised uh, by John in the Jordan and the Holy Spirit comes upon him like a dove. And now the Spirit leads him into the wilderness and he's there for 40 days and he's fasting and at maybe a point of weakness, he's hungry, the tempter comes to him and would say, if you're the son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Satan, the tempter, the devil is going for that point of weakness in Jesus' life. He knows that he's hungry 
and wants to uh, take Jesus away from following his heavenly father and to look after his physical needs before the spiritual needs, before the, the kingdom. And Jesus replies, it is written. Jesus replies by quoting the scriptures from Deuteronomy. Man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Jesus knew the scriptures. And Satan, the tempter, would still come to you and me today and try and get us to fall or be tempted at a point of weakness. He will come when we are weak and try to take us away. And so we need to be on our guard in those moments of weakness and those places and uh, situations where we know we're not strong. So that's the first point there. Uh, be strong and realise that the devil, he's actually called three different names in this passage. Uh, Matthew would call him Satan, the tempter and the devil in three different uh, verses, in the, these 11 verses. But the tempter will come uh, and try and take you away from the kingdom of God and will try to get you to look at other things, the physical, looking after your own needs. Here it was food, but it could be other things rather than looking uh, to God and his kingdom. So be on our, on our alert. Secondly, the devil takes Jesus to a very high uh, point in the temple in Jerusalem and would say, throw yourself down. And because it is written, um, and he quotes from one of the Psalms, Psalm number 90. And here Satan is misquoting scripture. He's taking scripture out of context. He's putting doubts into the mind of Jesus. If you are the son of God, he's trying to uh, cast doubts into the mind of Jesus. And Satan still will do that today. He will try to misquote scripture. He will try to say, did God really say that? Do you, you don't really have to believe the Bible? Oh, that's too difficult. Ignore that point. And he'll try and um, misconstrue scripture and take it out of context. And so we need to be aware of that also. And how did Jesus withstand the temptation? It is written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, quoting from the Old Testament scriptures. Jesus uh, was filled with the scriptures and was able to stand against uh, the, the devil's schemes. And if that wasn't enough, the devil takes Jesus to a very high mountain and would show him all the kingdoms of the world and said, all this I will give to you if you will bow down and worship me. And here we see the deliberate lies of Satan. All this I will give to you, Satan said. The kingdoms of the world do not belong to Satan to give to anyone. All this I will give to you. Satan could not give what didn't belong to him. And Satan today will still tell lies. He's the author of lies and myths, truths. And again, Jesus is aware of this and he would say, Away from me, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Jesus is able to withstand all these temptations because he is filled with the Spirit. He was led by the Spirit, verse 1. And we need to be led by the Spirit, filled with God's Holy Spirit. And secondly, Jesus was able to withstand the temptations because he quoted scripture. He knew the scriptures and he defeated Satan by quoting the scriptures. It is written on three occasions he was able to quote the scriptures from the Old Testament. And likewise, we need to be people who know the scriptures and are able to call it to mind and the scriptures will help us. A few points of application here. Jesus was tempted. He was tempted here in the wilderness and throughout his life, the Lord Jesus was tempted because the devil, Satan, the tempter, did not want Jesus to go to the cross of Calvary because if he knew Jesus would die for the sins of the world, that he would defeat sin and he would defeat Satan. And so throughout Jesus' life, he faced the temptation not to go to Calvary, not to obey the word of God, not to live by the will of God. And on each occasion, Jesus stood strong. And you and I will face temptation 
every day and in many different guises and it will come maybe when we least expect it and Satan will try to tempt us so that we do not follow God so that we do not obey the word of God so that we do not live uh, in the will of God so we need to be aware of it but secondly the fact that Jesus was tempted means that he identifies with us we see Jesus's humanity here Jesus is able to help us because he was like us he faced temptation and yet he didn't give in and that should encourage us not to give in I'm sure you all know the hymn yield not to temptation for yielding is sin temptation is not a sin but giving in, yielding to temptation, is uh, ha- when uh, causes sin. And so Jesus didn't yield. He didn't give in. And he stood resolute and he stood strong. And likewise, we should, when we're filled with the Spirit, and when we are filled with the Scripture, we will be able to stand against the devil's schemes. And he would want nothing better than to take you and me away from following Jesus. So let's be on our guard. Stand strong. Be filled with the Spirit. Jesus is able to help us. He identifies with us. He knows what it is like because he was tempted himself in every way, yet he did not give in. And that reveals the divinity of Jesus. And here we see the faithfulness of Jesus, the sinlessness of Jesus. And so when he went to Calvary's cross and died, he was the sinless son of God and he took all our sin upon himself. So we have here uh, an example to follow in Jesus. But secondly, 40 days and 40 nights should bring us back to our Old Testament history where the people of God were in the wilderness for 40 years. And what did they do in those 40 years? They failed every test. They grumbled, they complained against God, and they failed. And here is Jesus, and he didn't grumble, he didn't fail, he stood resolute, he stood strong, and he emerged victorious. But also, I want you to bring you back, who was the first person to face a temptation in Scripture? Of course, it was Adam. And I want to draw you draw some uh, similarities or maybe differences uh, from the experience of Adam and Jesus. Adam was in paradise. In the Garden of Eden had everything. Jesus was in the wilderness and had nothing. Adam had Eve for company. Jesus was on his own. In the wilderness. Adam and Eve had fruit to eat. Jesus had nothing. He was hungry. He had fasted for 40 days. Adam and Eve had everything and yet they failed. Jesus had nothing and yet he stood strong. He stood resolute against Satan's attacks. It was because of Adam's sin and disobedience that separation between us and God entered into our world. Adam yielded to temptation. And go back to Genesis 3. And what did Satan do? He cast doubts into the mind of Adam and Eve. Did God really say not to eat of that fruit? He cast doubts. And what did Satan do here to Jesus in the wilderness? Cast doubts. If you are the son of God, throw yourself down and God will, I will give you. He was casting doubts. He was putting Adam and Eve to the test and they failed. He put Jesus to the test and Jesus stood strong. What did Adam or what did Satan do? He distorted scripture. With Adam and Eve, did God really say? He was taking scripture and he was twisting it and putting doubts. 
And he's doing the same thing here with Jesus. And he will do the same thing in the world today. And it's sad when many people uh, dis, um, distort scripture and twist it to suit their own ends. And so we need to be strong. So how do we cope with temptation? What can we learn from Genesis 3, from the people of Israel in the 40 years in the wilderness, and from Matthew 4? Well, stay close to Jesus. Follow in his footsteps. Be filled with the Spirit of Jesus. Be filled with the Scriptures of God. And when we are filled with the Scriptures and the Spirit, and aware that the Satan is alive and looking to pounce like a roaring lion, be prepared. And you will uh, be able to withstand the devil's schemes. Jesus did. And he will give us the victory when we stay close to him, when we're filled with the Spirit, and when we know the Scriptures. The Scriptures, uh, Satan flees when he hears the Scriptures. And Satan does not want you to read the Bible or know the Scriptures. So don't give him a foothold in your life. And so maybe over Lent, instead of giving something up, what about reading the Scriptures? Read the book of Matthew or read the book of Psalms. Uh, just spend that little bit more time reading and memorising the scriptures. This was brought home to me a few days ago. I came across a video on YouTube. It's about an American pastor and he's working with Christian leaders in China. And let's watch this video and you'll be encouraged, I know, because I definitely was challenged and encouraged. So let's watch the video and I will draw it all together again in a few moments with this uh, story. We go to China from time to time and, and uh, uh, we train leaders. And this time we brought up 22 leaders from the Hunan province and they rode 13 hours on a train to get to a hotel that they came up two by two in these elevators as, so as to not draw any attention. And then they got to a hotel room, a little apartment uh, room. It's only about 700 square feet in the little living room, no air conditioning, hardwood floor, 22 sat there. I came in, and when you teach in China, you start at 8 in the morning, and you don't get done till 5 at night. You teach the whole day. They were sitting there, all 22 of them, and I looked around, and I said, now, if we get caught, what will happen to me? They said, oh, you'll get deported in 24 hours, and we'll go to prison for three years. I said, you're kidding. How many of you have been in prison for your faith? Out of 22, 18 raised their hands. I thought, no way. I looked at him and I said, you, you 22 people, how many people do you oversee? Because they were all of these small group leaders, underground church leaders in the Hunan province. I said, how many, if you counted up all the people under your jurisdiction, how many would it be? And they counted them up and they said, a little over 20 million. I said, what? See, we forget there's 1.3 billion people in China. This is crazy. Well, I had 15 Bibles, and I passed them out. Obviously, seven didn't get them. And I said, let's turn to 2 Peter chapter 1, and we're going to read it. And just then, one lady handed hers to somebody next to her. And I thought, hmm, interesting. Well, we turned there anyway, and as we started reading it, I understood why she gave it away. She had memorized the whole thing. She just recited the whole chapter. When it was done, I went over to her at a break, and I said, you, you, you recited the whole chapter. She says, oh, yes, I've memorized many chapters. I said, where did you memorize so many chapters? She said, in prison. <laughs> she said, you have much time in prison. <laughs> so I said, but don't they confiscate the Bible? And she said, yes. So people bring in scriptures written on pieces of paper, and they bring it in. So I said, but then if they find that piece of paper on you, won't they confiscate that? She said, oh, yes, that's why you memorize it as fast as you can. Because <laughs> even though they can take the paper away, they can't take what's hidden in your heart. I thought, wow. Well, after three days, you fall in love with these people. And when it was done, I, I said, how can I pray for you? I'm going to go back to America. And you guys have been just so wonderful. How can I pray for you? 
They said, you know, Wayne, you guys can gather like this whenever you want to in America. We can't. Could you pray that one day we'll be just like you? And I looked at him and I said, I will not do that. Big, incredulous eyes looked at me and they said, why? <laughs> I said, because you guys rode a train for 13 hours to get here. In my country, if you've got to drive more than an hour, people don't come. You sat on a wooden floor for three days. In my country, if people have to sit more than 40 minutes, they leave. You sat not only here for three days on a hard wooden floor, but you did it without air conditioning. In my country, if it's not padded pews and air conditioning, people don't often come back. In my country, we have an average of two Bibles per family. We don't read any of them. You hardly have any Bibles, and you memorize them from pieces of paper. I will not pray that we become like, uh, you become like us, but I will pray that we become just like you. I know I was challenged and uh, with this uh, video and just that we could become like the people in China, that we would have a love for God's word and a, a desire to stand up uh, for Jesus. Uh, these people uh, could even face imprisonment. Now, I don't think we're going to face prison here, but we should stand strong and stand in the scriptures and stand in the spirit of God. So tonight, I hope that you've been helped and blessed. So as you face temptation, be filled with the Spirit, be filled with the Scriptures, and stay close to Jesus. Stand for Jesus uh, where he has placed you. Amen. I'm going to lead us in prayer now. And then after I've prayed for ourselves, we'll uh, pray for the situation in Ukraine. And I'm going to use a prayer that was written by my friend Simon. Simon is a Royal Navy chaplain and he's based in Scotland and he sent me this prayer uh, for the situation in Ukraine. So let's come to God now in prayer. Mm -hmm. Our Father God, uh, we thank you uh, for your word. We thank you that we have Bibles in our homes. Help us to read them, to know them to love your word. Give us a desire to be people of the word. Father, fill us with your Holy Spirit. As Jesus was able to resist temptation because he was filled with your spirit and filled with the scriptures, help us likewise to be filled with your Holy Spirit. Spirit of Jesus, descend upon each one of us and make us strong where we are weak. Help us not to yield to temptation because we know that yielding is sin. Help us to stand strong. And Father, as we think of standing strong, we are encouraged by the people we see, uh, that we've seen and heard about tonight in China. Standing strong, standing on the scriptures, standing up for Jesus. We pray that we would become like them in in many ways. As we think of people standing strong, we remember the people in Ukraine. And now we use this prayer as we pray for the situation in Ukraine tonight. Let us pray. We bow before you as the one who is holy and righteous, the one who is the author of life and the lover of peace. We thank you that you make it possible for frail and fallen people like ourselves to come before your throne of grace where we are assured of your advocacy and we are able to rest in your absolute authority because of all that Jesus has done and won for us. We thank you that nothing is too big and nothing is too small to bring before you in prayer. And we want to lift before you the situation in Ukraine tonight. We pray for an end to Russia's incursion into this country. We pray that the leader of Russia, Mr. Putin, would sense the strong opposition that there is throughout the world and by many people within his own country as to regards the military activity. We pray for protection and wisdom for President Zelensky and the government of Ukraine. Lord God, the psalmist tells us 
that you make war cease to the ends of the earth. You're the one who can break the bow and shatter the spear. And so we pray that you uh, would watch over uh, um, the people in Ukraine and that you would bring peace. We pray that you would be exalted in the earth and that many people would know that you are God alone. We pray that you would hasten the day when man would study war no more and when the earth is filled with the knowledge of the glory of God as the waters cover the sea. We pray in the name of the one who is the wonderful counsellor, mighty God, the everlasting Father and the Prince of Peace. Amen. Thank you for joining uh, with me this evening. I look forward to seeing you on Sunday as we return to Ecclesiastes uh, chapter 4. But in the meantime, uh, the Lord bless you and keep you and make the Lord make his face to shine upon you and lift up his countenance and give you peace. Amen. I cast my mind to Calvary where Jesus bled and died for me. I see. His hands, His feet, my Savior on that cursed tree. His body bowed and drenched in tears, they laid Him down in Joseph's tomb, the entrance sealed by Him. I'm